Figma just changed the game for designers. And in this video, I will show you how to use Min and Max, Text Truncate and Direction Graph to create a fully responsive component like this. But without further ado, let's dive right into it. As always, if you want to follow along this video, I put the Figma link in the description below. So we're going to start with the minimum and maximum features, and then we're going to increase the complexity until we get to the responsive component. So far, before this update, when you have a parent container and a child container that is set to fill, whenever you adjust the size of the parent container, the child would just follow. But now you can grab the child and set a minimum width. This is very intuitive. You come here on this arrow and you add min width. Let's say for this one, we can add maybe 240 pixels. And now instead of just following the parent, as soon as we get to 240 pixels, the child will stay there. It's like it goes from fill to fix whenever we get to the minimum width. Another option you have to set the minimum width is to, let me remove this first set the current size as the minimum width so i select my child component add min width and here i click again on the arrow and i set current width as the minimum width and the same happens with the height i select the child component go to height add min height and here i can put maybe 300 pixels and again this is very intuitive as soon as i change the parent i get to the min height and the child stays there now I want to show you this new feature that pairs really well with the minimum width and this is the tag truncate. When I start playing around with the parent, I can see that as soon as I get to four lines, the text doesn't look good anymore. So I need to truncate my text and to do that, I select the text and first I need to make sure that I'm using fill and hug for the height. So I select my text, come here to these three dots go here and truncate text and here i can select the number of lines i desire to show and for me are three lines and for the title i will leave it to one line something very common for titles and now when i start playing around with the with the width again as soon as it gets to four lines it will just show the three dots instead of going to the fourth line and if i make it even shorter i can see that my title also is truncated now, if you understood the minimum, the maximum is basically the same. We select the child, come here to the arrow, at max, and here we're going to put 400. And we can do the same for the height, at max here, and let's put 600. Now we select the parent, and the child follows until we get to the maximum, and the same thing for the height. Now let's get to the fun part, and probably the reason why you click on this video, and that's direction grab. So some stuff you need to consider before setting the direction to grab is that all your child components should have a defined width. So for example, in this one, if I select all of the child components, all of them are set to hack right now, and that's a defined width. So if I go to the parent component and select grab direction, as soon as I get to the child component, it will go to the second line. And I can also play around with the, with the alignment here. And the same will happen if all of the child components are set to fix instead of hug. So let's say all of the child components are set to fill. And I put this on grab. This will not go to the other line because Figma doesn't know when it should go to the second line because there is no defined width. We can change that if we combine fill with the minimum width. So let's say I select all the child components, then come here add min width, maybe a hundred. So now that is set to grab, I'll shrink this. And as soon as I get to that minimum width, it will start going to the other line. And as you can see, it fills the other line. And I think that's, that's a combination that is very common um, on web development. Figma also add a new way to set the components to space between. So instead of setting a gap here, you can change this to auto and it will automatically go to space between. You don't need to go to these three dots anymore and change it from here. It's a little bit quicker. If you're liking this video so far, please hit the like button. It will take you one second and it's a huge motivation for me. Thank you. And now let's combine all these features to make this a fully responsive component. So imagine that this container is your page and your page will be changing depending on the screen size. So for a large desktop screen, 
it will look like this and right now all the items are set to fill so your component will stretch like this we don't want that and for smaller screens for a mobile size screen it will look like this terrible so let's fix this and a good rule of thumb that i want to show you is to define the maximum start with a parent container and to define the minimum start with a child and go from there so we don't want our component to stretch like this so let's select the container of my product card come here to width and let's add a max width of 1200 and also since this is an auto layout let's center this and now when i stretch like this it will get to 1200 and it will stay like that and that's what we want once you set the max for your parent container you can check how your children container behave if you don't define a specific maximum for each of them they will split the width evenly if you don't want that you can select your components let's say the image and add individual max width let's say i want to make this 400 when I stretch this, the image will get to 400 and then the rest of my width will go for my for my description block. I will remove the max width for now. Now let's add the minimum. So let's start with the peels. I can check the all of them have a defined width because we are using hog here. That means that I if I select the container and I go to grab, it will automatically go down. Good. Now we can start with the text. Let's say we don't want the text to reach the four lines. I can come here in text truncate and define these to three. And remember, we can do this because our text is set to fill and hug. Now, let's say that we don't want the title to go to the other line. In that case, we can define a minimum width for this whole section. So maybe maybe this one so i select this section and here i come to admin width instead of setting manually i can set this to my current width to be the minimum width if i shrink this it will stay like that good now for the image let's do the same i go to width admin width and here maybe i'll put it 300 and now when i shrink it stays in 300 just to recall what we did, we start with all the child components. We start with the pills, text, then the whole description block, and then we went for the image. So now all of the children components have a defined width. Now I can go to the parent and set it to grab, and it should automatically go down when I get to all these minimum sizes. So I shrink this again, and look at this. If you're still not impressed with that, you can select your components and go to the new that mode. And you will see that all of the things that we just said, the grab, min, max, and everything are now all reflected in your code. So your developer has no excuse to not implement that. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you want to learn more about Figma and all these new releases, follow me and see you on my next tutorial. Bye bye.